Here is an interesting form of construction I found in one of my older construction books. And you can probably see why it's not used today. However, I will provide you with a little more information on why you might not use this at the end of the video. And according to the book, they used this method so they could use shorter boards. And I'm not about to suggest this method wouldn't work if the joists were spaced closer together. And you weren't going to be dealing with any heavy structural loads that would have created problems for this type of floor framing. And you could use some type of a gusset plywood construction standard lumber. And I'm guessing even some type of building hardware might work to connect the two joists together. And of course, these brakes will be staggered to increase the floor strength. And the joists here are 24 inches on center, sitting on top of a beam that was created by three separate boards that would have been nailed together. And you can see here where everything is nice and straight. And for those of you wondering what in the heck these are and why the other side isn't blocked, that's because some of these older floors weren't blocked around the perimeter. And if they were, then it wouldn't be uncommon to have a block like this so that you could install some type of a vent here for the crawl space ventilation. And of course, we can't forget the support posts that would have been sitting directly on top of the concrete with no nails or even a block of wood underneath the post. And believe it or not, the support posts would have simply been nailed to the beam without any building hardware and rarely had any problems with this type of construction. Even in earthquake country where I live, I never went to a job to fix the post to beam or the post to the footing connection. Never once. And I'm not about to suggest that nobody ever had to do these types of repairs just that I never had to do them. Now these beams that were made by attaching two or three boards together might not have ever had a break installed directly over a post like we're looking at here. And again, I rarely came to a project that ever had problems due to the fact that the beam was built. However, would have had problems from these sagging if the lumber wasn't large enough. And of course, I am not promoting that you do any of this type of construction. I'm just making the video to provide you with an example of how something might have been built in the late 1800s or the early 1900s. Now let's go ahead and talk about one of the problems you could have with this type of floor framing. And that would be the fact that if any of the joists ever sagged, then it could create a problem for the other side, especially if it's built with crowned or sagging lumber to start with. So here you can see where I left this board alone. This board here is at the original height of the floor to create a flat level surface. However, if we bring it up, it is no longer going to be level and we are not going to have a flat and level floor. And the same problem is going to exist if the crown is up. If we crown this board up, then this board here is going to be a little bit lower. And this isn't the only reason why they didn't use this type of floor framing system. Because if you think about it, you won't have to worry about the joist sagging and then affecting the other side. If both of the joists are sitting directly over a load bearing beam or wall. So again, just kind of throwing something out there that might be of an interest to some of you, especially those who are interested in the history of construction like myself. And let us know if you've had any experience with this type of construction or if there might be additional problems that I might not have mentioned in the video.